What's going on guys? This is Rob and I want to talk for a second about how the Eternals movie can introduce Galactus into the MCU, right? So right off the bat, I was going through the comments of the previous video that I did and you guys absolutely nailed what the plot of Eternals is most likely going to be, right? Now here's the funny thing about that though. That was only a new instance, right? For years and years and years and years, Marvel never explained how Celestials were born, right? We simply just knew that they existed and that was basically it. We were kind of left to our own devices to believe that the Celestial population existed as an absolute number in any one particular universe. And because they were cosmic entities, they were akin to like eternity, infinity, and those guys in the sense that if the universe dies and is reborn, then much like those cosmic entities will manifest, the Celestials will be the same way. They'll manifest as like an absolute number, and that'll basically be it. Even the origin of the Celestials themselves before the events of Ultimates was a little ambiguous, right? You had different origins from different people, right? Some saying the Celestials created the multiverse, others saying Celestials were just a super advanced race that achieved incredible power and then just became the Celestials. Again, it was kind of all over the place. But the funny thing about this is that the, the notion of the Celestials in terms of how they procreate was actually given to us in a story called Earth X, which we actually covered over at Comics Explained probably about three years ago. And people keep asking me to do the follow-up series, Universe X and Paradise X, and I probably will. But the important thing here is that the Celestials themselves basically procreate by planting their seed, their essence more or less, in a planet. Quite literally, celestials bang planets. So the idea behind this is that because these worlds are capable of supporting life, it's like a woman carrying a baby around, right? She has to consume nutrients in order to feed the baby so the baby can grow and so on and so forth. Celestial eggs work the same way. They get put inside the core of a planet where it feeds not really on the entire life energy of that planet, otherwise it would kill everything, but it feeds slowly on the life energy of that planet so that life can still grow and sustain itself. And then when the celestial is ready to be born, it basically emerges from the planet's core and destroys it in the process, basically killing everybody on that world. Now, here's where Galactus comes into play. In the original Earth X story, when that origin of the Celestials was given to us, that was simply just kind of a one-off alternate reality. And that what ended up happening is that in S.H.I.E.L.D. issue number four by Jonathan Hickman, we basically got this concept from Earth X, which was carried over into the main Marvel universe and the rest of the multiverse and being presented to us as an absolute rule in terms of how Celestials procreate. The only caveat to that is that in S.H.I.E.L.D. number four, you got something called the Celestial Madonna, which was basically a woman or a Celestial that was pregnant with a celestial. And that's not how it normally works. It was considered a variant, so not really a traditional celestial born in the traditional way. And so the role that Galactus plays in relation to this, at least according to Earth X, and now as it's established in the rest of Marvel Comics across the multiverse, is that if the celestials basically procreate by putting their life seeds in a planet, then Galactus's purpose is to travel around the universe and basically consume life-sustaining worlds, thereby keeping the celestial population in check. Because if Galactus didn't exist, then celestials would basically just overpopulate a universe. They would be like humanity on Earth, right? Just procreating with reckless abandon and then leading to overpopulation problems. And so that's that's the role he plays there. Now, this is a cool thing, because the question you guys are most likely asking yourself is, if Galactus actually exists in the MCU already, why haven't we seen him yet? Well, the easiest answer is because the universe is a big place. <laughs> it's a very big place, right? I mean, if I asked you right now, what's going on in Jamaica, you couldn't tell me, right? And that's just Earth. That's not even the universe, right? Like, what's going on in the dark matter space of the universe where we can't really observe anything? You can't, you can't give me the answer to that question, right? Because you don't know. And that's the way it is with the MCU, right? Like there are huge portions, like right now, everything you've seen in the MCU has largely been relegated to the Milky Way galaxy and maybe a couple other places like the larger Magellanic Cloud, where the Kree come from, from the planet Hala and so on and so forth. But we haven't even really seen their home world in its full entirety yet. We simply just know that it's there. And so because of that, we've only really, really looked at like a very small portion of the Marvel Cinematic Universe on a universal scale. Galactic this could very well be out there somewhere, just consuming worlds and that's it. But the great way that this could happen in Eternals is it's a throwaway line. It's just a small little thing. Now, the funny thing here is that looking at the trailers, like Dane Whitman's character seems to more or less be the stand-in for us, for why it is the Eternals haven't gotten involved with anything, right? That's what he asked in the second trailer. Why didn't you ever stop any of the wars or why didn't you stop Thanos, the sin of Titan? Why didn't you stop him from like blinking out half-life in the universe? Where have you been at all this time? And the answer that, that he was given was, 
we were told not to by the Celestials. And that was basically it, right? So he kind of seems to be the stand-in for us. And it's entirely possible that when the emergence is explained, right? When that scene comes along in the movie where it's like, we've got seven days until the emergence. And it's like, well, what the hell is the emergence? That is a Celestial is gonna be born in Earth. Then that could probably lead into a second question, which is, is that how Celestials are born? And the answer is yes. And then it's a third question. Wouldn't the Celestials just overrun the entire universe? Is there nothing keeping them in check? And that's when you get the answer. Well, that's what Galactus does done like that's it that's 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 all you get right and, and it'd be just an, a super easy way to throw his character in the universe exists in a delicate balance the celestials procreate by depositing their eggs into a world and when the egg is ready and it gestates into a full celestial it's born destroying the world in the process but in order to keep the celestial population in check galactus travels around the universe and consumes life-sustaining worlds thereby removing or minimizing the amount of worlds that celestials can deposit their eggs in so they don't run amok across the whole universe Universe. Now, the question to ask here is, has there ever been an instance where celestials have basically procreated and dominated an entire universe because Galactus was destroyed or Galactus didn't exist in that universe, whatever the case is? And the answer to that question is, Yes, that was in Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four, and they were called the Mad Celestials. So the whole idea behind this is that in this alternate reality, which is really more of a kind of behind the scenes explanation, which is really alluded to us more than anything else, that in an alternate reality, the Celestials in that universe had seemingly destroyed any competition, anybody who could stop them, right? So Eternity, Infinity, Galactus, probably different things like that, which on the surface, a Celestial by themselves wouldn't be able to do that. One of the things the Mad Celestials did is they actually coalesced their energies into a massive singular celestial, which was wildly powerful, seemingly on a universal scale. The important thing here is that seemingly in that universe, those celestials basically spread throughout all of existence. And that basically led to them conquering the entirety of that universe and then forcing the universe's denizens to worship them. They kind of became mad gods. That's what you want to call them. So that precedent does exist. We've only seen it once and it's only been alluded to, but the possibility is there. So that's how you can get Galactus in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I know a lot of people really love the theory that Thanos created Galactus to basically keep the idea going that the universe's population would stay at a smaller number than it was in order to ensure that overpopulation doesn't become an issue, which is a great idea because Thanos' motivation outside of that was kind of dumb when it came to Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. As much as I love those movies, Thanos was an idiot because wiping out half the life of the universe is nice, but in like a thousand years, it'll be right back where it was before, right? So the thing here is that this is a great way to introduce Galactus into the MCU, not to really give us a full on display of what he's capable of, not to really give us the totality of what it is that he can do, to not give us like a depiction of him or the Silver Surfer or anybody like that, but to simply just tell us as the audience, Galactus exists and he's been here this entire time. Now, whether or not we'll get the origin of Galactus from the old Thor comics, I don't really know. I mean, the origin of Galactus could be done in any number of different ways. And honestly, I don't really care how he got there. I just hope that he's there. <laughs> That's all I really care about. But nonetheless, it's a great way to introduce the character into the Marvel Cinematic Universe with a really simple, put together process that's easy to understand, super simple to digest, and then leaves us wanting more. Because if we end up finding out that Galactus does exist by way of the Eternals film, we're gonna wanna see him. Right? We're gonna wanna see Galactus, right? This just giant guy, this giant purple guy with a helmet and how he looks as relative to the people who were looking at him. Like, I, I, I would love that, right? I would absolutely love that concept. I know you guys would too, especially the Silver Surfer. Uh, I'm gonna audition for the voiceover gig with Silver Surfer if that ever happens. I don't think I'll ever get it. I don't know. It's worth a shot, but like, I wanna audition for it. I feel like I'd have a voice for a good Silver Surfer. But nonetheless, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end because I'm kind of rambling at this point. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know how excited you are to see Galactus in the MCU, and I will catch you all later. Peace.